NAT, or network address translation, has become a commonly used technique for prolonging the use of IPv4 on today's internet. Originally, it was designed as a way to have isolated networks to connect to the internet without renumbering. So you just NAT instead of renumbering your entire network. So inside this presentation, we are going to have some NAT terminology, the typical use case on a campus network, like the one which we've been presenting throughout this course, and some samples Cisco iOS as well as Juniper configuration. Technically, NAT is a translation of one IP address into another IP address, which people usually call static or one-to-one -one NAT. NAPT is what most people refer to as NAT, and it's NAT address and port translation. So you're going to have multiple IP addresses onto the one other IP address. So the TCP or UDP port distinguishes different packet flows. So you have multiple addresses on one side and one address on this other, sharing one address on this side and you differentiate the connections using the ports that are being used, and we shall look at this later. NAPT should not be confused with NATPT. NATPT is protocol translation, so it was a technology which does protocol, we mean by the IPv4 to IPv6 protocol and back, in addition to address translation, and it has long since been made obsolete by the AETF. There are other um, IPv4 to IPv6 translation mechanisms, but these are not discussed here. When most people say NAT, the one which they most usually refer to is NAPT, the network address and port translation. They, they don't usually mean the static one-to-one -one NAT, and they usually don't mean NATPT, which is the obsolete v4 to v6 translation. Then there's carrier grade NAT or CGN. This is the service provider version of subscriber NAT. Subscriber NAT or subscriber NAPT can only handle some hundreds of translations, but the service provider version is meant to handle millions of translations. And the way they do this is by throwing huge high performance hardware, very expensive at it. So you can do multiple address families as well. And some people refer to it as large-scale NAT. The vendors would like to sell you this. Um, however, for the campus networks that we are looking at, subscriber NAT is most likely um, sufficient.